Welcome to the UGC series of lectures in zoology. We shall be today discussing parasites and the parasitism. What is a parasite? Parasite is an organism which lives at the expense of another organism which we call as the host. The parasite is usually smaller than the host and there are various degrees of parasitism as we see in the nature. We have small parasites, we have larger parasites, we have ectoparasites, we have endoparasites. The ectoparasites which live externally, the endoparasites which live internally. Accordingly, we see that some of the parasites which are totally dependent on their hosts are known as the obligatory parasites. And there are some facultative parasites which for some time live at the expense of the host but can live without host also for some time. Similarly, we have another type of parasitism which we call as symbiosis wherein both parasite as well as host derive the benefit from each other. And then we have some predators which eat up the, their host at one time like what lion does in the jungle. These uh, parasites vary from smaller size to larger size, from microscopic to, uh, to a larger size as many as 10 to 15 meters in size. A parasite may belong to phylum protozoa or it may belong to some other phyla in zoological kingdom like platyhelminthes, nemathelminthes or even they belong to phylum arthropoda. So we shall be discussing today an interesting group of these parasites which are which live as endoparasites in our intestines or the intestines of other animals and have an effect, bad effect on the host. Supposing you might have heard about the long worm which is, can be up to 10 meters in length. That is Tinea saginata. So what, what is this Tinea saginata? This is a parasite which belongs to platyhelminthes. So we shall be taking up this platyhelminthes today. The phylum platyhelminthes carries the animals wherein they have flattened body. They are dorso ventrally flattened. Then they have a mouth, then the digestive system, reproductive system, excretory system, all other systems are carried along with them. The platyhelminthes are triploblastic animals. And this is the first group of animals that shows the organ system. First of all, in protozoa, and then in porifera, and uh, then cylindrates, we don't find such type of an organ system. Where in, when in platyhelminthes, we do find this organ system. There are different organs which, different, which function differently. We classify them into turbularia, trematoda, cestoda. These are the three classes and under the platyhelminthes. Then there is nematyhelminthes under which comes the uh, nematoda. So the first group, platyhelminthes, if we take under this uh, trematoda, cestoda, uh, we see the cestodes are very interesting in their structure. They believe the cestoda can be classified into two subclasses, cestodaria and eocestoda. The cestodaria are very simple. They are they are very, they are not, they are unsegmented, while as the cestodes, the eocestoda, they are segmented and may carry from two to three segments to any extent, maybe in thousands, two thousand, four thousand uh, segments. In trematoda, they are leaf-like, dorsoventrally flattened. 
and they are not segmented. So this is the difference between trematoda and the cestoda. Another difference between trematoda and the cestoda, we see that in trematodes, we have the mouth, we have the, uh, we have the esophagus, and then there are two sechi or the intestinal canals, which don't end up, and they are not having any anal aperture. But, and in cestoda, there's a different structure and they are not having any digestive system as such because there is no mouth, there is no esophagus or the buccal cavity or the intestines. So this is another difference between trematoda and the cestoda. Then in trematodes, we may find some live externally, that is they are ectoparasitic, like we find some living on the gills of the fishes. But in cestoda, we don't find such type of then such type of a parasite which lives externally. So the trematodes, which are leaf-like organisms, they carry the hermaphroditic reproductive organs inside. And similarly, we have the cestoda, which are segmented animals. Each segment, a mature segment of these, carries the hermaphroditic set of the reproductive uh, sets of the, that is, male and female reproductive organs. Similarly, we have the excretory system, which is existing both in the, in the trematodes as well as the cestodes. In trematodes, we are having just a pulsating aperture, pulsating vesicle at the posterior end, which is connected to the excretory canals, to excretory canals. Well as in cestoda, we are having two longitudinal excretory canals, or there may be more, four also, which are transversely connected, and in turn, these are connected to certain cells, which we call as the flame cells. These flame cells collect the excretory material from the body, and which is then taken into these excretory canals and down to the down, uh, this is taken outside the body, either in young ones through the pulsatile vesicle or later directly to the exterior. Then we have, we have a syncytial membrane which covers, covers both the trematodes as well as the cestodes. This is known as the tegument. This is, this tegument is produced into microtracts there is no epidermis or the cuticle in these organisms. So these, this tegument are the mycotikes, which are, this tegument is produced, the small cells is, are produced into mycotikes, which go on collecting the food material, digested food material, already prepared food material for the organisms, which is taken in into the body, for which we have underlining mitochondria. So these mitochondria help in active absorption of the digestive material, which is already digested, most, most of the part is digested already. So this is carried into the body with the help of these mitochondria uh, through active transport. Then we have nervous system also in these organisms. The nervous system comprises of a ring, nervous ring, which uh, then has the longitudinal nerve tracts, which are nerve cords, which go down the body of these animals. And then respiratory system, which is wanting in these in platyhelminthes, which is the respiration is accomplished through their body surface. Directly the, the oxygen is taken through their body surface and then the carbon dioxide is also excreted again through the body surface. And then we have circulatory system. There is no perfect circulatory system in these because the food is directly taken and distributed throughout the body in these organisms. We see in these organisms that they have attachment organs. The attachment organs in the form of suckers or there may be hooks also. In 
trematodes, we have mostly, we find that there are suckers. There is an anterior sucker and a posterior sucker. This helps in the attachment of these parasites to the substratum, the substratum being the mostly the intestinal canal, or sometimes if they are externally, they attach themselves to the gills or other parts of the body. In cestodes, there is a different structure because trematodes are oval, while as these are long, the tapeworm, these are known as the tapeworms. Because trima, trematoda is the trima, they bear the hole, that's the mouth, that is encircled by the oral sucker. While as in cestoda, we are not having any mouth, but there may be four suckers in the, which, are, which are very muscular, and these are the attachment organs. In addition to that, we find that they have the attachment organ in the form of rostellum in the head, in the scolex. So this rostellum bears mostly the hooks. These hooks help in attaching the animal to their body surface inside so that they can live against the currents as we see in they live in the intestinal canal wherein there is always the food current going on and they can live against that current. Then the cestodes are having three parts in their body. The anterior part is the head, which, which we call as the scolex, which bears the suckers and may also bear the rostellum and the hooks. Then there is a small region known as the neck region. This neck region is very thin, but it is proliferating region. From here, the other parts of this of the cestode arise or grow, which these proliferate. So this is the proliferating region of the body of the cestodes. And this is small, but after this we find there are so many segments. The segments vary according to the cestode where it lodges and which cestode it is. If it is a large cestode, there we find it may, these, uh, these uh, segments are the proglottids, main number from 3 to even 2,000 or 4,000, because the size of the cestodes vary from a microscopic size to as many as 10 to 15 meters in different cestodes. So there are many citropila. The citropila, which is comprised of the proglottids, these uh, proglottids are the immature. Then there is region in between, that is the mature region, mature proglottids. And lastly, we find towards the posterior region are the gravid proglottids. The mature, pro the immature proglottids carry the primordia of the, of the reproductive organs the middle region, which is the uh, mature region, they carry the perfect uh, hermaphroditic reproductive organs, that is male as well as the female reproductive organs. The male organs are in the form of the testes, then the seminal vesicle, then we have the vasa efferentia there, and which are connected and carried to the vas deferens. This vas deferens is carried to the serous sac. While as in a female reproductive system, we are having two or more ovaries, which are connected to the oviduct, to the uterus, where in eggs are stored. And then these are carried out through the genital pore to the outside, literally. So this, uh, this, this way, they form a perfect hermaphroditic system, a reproductive system in these organisms. Last of all is the, herm this is, we find the gravid proglottids. The gravid proglottids, which carry the uterus, well-developed uterus, wherein you will find eggs. The eggs may be singly, they may be in groups, in capsules, they may form the uterus, may form diverticula, or it may be a single sac-shaped structure. But by the rupture of these, 
proglottids, the posterior most proglottids, the gravid proglottids, the eggs are released into the intestines, which are carried along with the feces to the outside world. Sometimes the gravid proglottids as a whole are carried to the outside as we find in tinea saginata. Let us take one such animal, such a, such a cestode, which, which is very important because it is found through our, which we carry through our e-tables, we carry it to our body. There are two such types. One is the pork tape and another one which is the bovis tape. The bovine take form, the infection of which we get generally, what is this actually? We find that uh, uh, sometimes we take raw, raw uh, meat and our, our uncooked meat, what you call our semi-cooked meat, this we don't know that it might be carrying a cyst inside. The cyst in its muscles, when it comes out, when it reaches our uh, the stomach, then the intestines, the outer cyst wall is dissolved, and there this cyst, this uh, cyst, what we call as the cystic circus comes out. The cystic circus is actually having a head known as the scolex. And then, then it is the, the rest of the party is in the form of the vesicle. Soon this uh, comes out by the, by the secretions of our stomach and the intestines. It gets itself attached to the intestinal wall in the jejunum part of our intestines. And starts proliferation, that is the division. The stropila is coming out and there may be thousands of segments formed. These segments, the, as I told you, are the immature, the mature, the gravid. And the gravid part which carries the eggs, which are these are, these come out along with the feces to the outside world. These are taken along with the grass by our cow, by our buffalo. And inside their body, when the eggs reach their intestines, the egg shell breaks down and the embryo is released, which directly goes into the hepatic portal system and reaches the liver. Because it can break its egg with the help of the hooks, six hooks which are contained in it. So when it, once it reaches the liver, then it goes to the, it may go to the mesenteries, it can go through the blood, to the right heart, to the left heart, then it can go directly to the lungs, it can go to diaphragm or to any part of the body. And it is generally lodged in the tongue area, in the shoulder or other areas, muscular areas of the animals. So once we take this, this uh, such a, an infected uh, part of, the, of this animal, a uh, cow, buffalo, beef, what we call as, uh, the, this beef, once it carries the, this infection, we develop the infection of this because it is known as the cystic circus, cystic circus bovis. So this cystic circus bovis, once it is taken by the man, again it reaches our, our stomach, our intestines, and attaches itself again. So it develops into a, into a large worm, which we call as the, as the tinea saginata. Tinea saginata can be up to 10, meter, 10 meters in length. Generally, it is two, three, five meters but, and carries as many as 2,000 to 4,000 proglottids in it. So it steals away our food. It, it, uh, it uh, costs our uh, this uh, uh, vitamin B complex. So one suffers from anemia, one suffers from appetite, nausea is there, vomiting is there, and sometimes it may call even, cause even indigestion also. So we suffer from the infection of this in many ways. And uh, then there is generally the abdominal pain also. And we need to go to a doctor for treatment. And the treatment is done through anti-helminthics, which are given to the person by a doctor. These anti-helminthics help in removing the parasite from our intestines and we get, can get rid of the parasite. 
which is otherwise very dangerous at times. Because one can even suffer from the nervous troubles like epilepsy by, um, by its presence in our body because it may affect our nervous system also. With this, we come to the conclusion of today's lecture on parasites and parasitism. Thank you very much.